Welcome to Pierce Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we're here for another mini sode. Yeah, Monday mini, where we bring you some 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 really important information, uh, but in a shorter form content. If you're uh, if you just found us on YouTube, maybe this is the first video you're watching. Uh, we we typically have a podcast goes over an hour long, and it's once a week. But we also drop these Monday minis about ten minutes or so, uh, where we kind of distill some information in a short amount of time. Uh, and today we're talking about on eBay. When should you be accepting offers? So this is a tough one because everybody has their own model, right? They have their own way they do things. This is how we do it. And, and Mike may even disagree with some of the things here, right? So the first one, this is an easy one. Things have been sitting around for a long time. Now, everybody has their definition of a long time. For me, yeah, it's... Yeah, you let stuff go for like six years. <laughs> yeah, I know. But if anything's been sitting for over, let's say, six months and no one has, like, I haven't gotten a message, no one's offered me, as long as that offer is, you know... 60, 70%, I'll take it. Now, you also got to think about, let's say you paid a dollar for something. Like maybe 60, 70%, maybe you're willing to go to 50, maybe 40%. Yeah, you're kind of looking at your ROI, like what you'll actually get. So yeah, the purchase price is going to make a difference. But sitting around for a while, I think it's a good good thing because the reality is unless you're in only one very small niche, it's hard to keep track of the market to really know. Like you might see a sold here and there or something. Uh, but if there's no movement, then it either means one of two things. One, your price is too high or two, the demand isn't there, mm-hmm. right? Or maybe it's a combination of both of those things. And so it is possible that an offer is actually kind of market correction, like basically saying this is actually a value that people are willing to pay. And you may go back and forth with somebody to get to a different spot. But um, sometimes if it's sitting for a long time with no movement at all, you, your pricing is wrong or the demand isn't there, which ultimately means your pricing is wrong. So now there are things where there's just fewer buyers specifically looking for it, but it might be priced right. Like we're thinking, you know, collectibles where it might be like $5,000 for this item, but you just got to wait for that right buyer. Yeah. And so you don't necessarily need to take a low offer on it. <clears throat> but if you, you know, if it's just an everyday thing and you bought it and there hasn't been any movement, you you might need to adjust the prices. So I, I think sitting for a long time is definitely a good indicator. <laughs> Pick an offer. But here's the thing, you know, sometimes... And I do this all the time. I find something and I'm like, wow, this is really valuable. It's unique, right? And I'll list it and it'll sit for a year and I'll sit for two years. And yeah, either one, it might not even, it might be your price or two. It may be that when you looked up the listing, right? And it sold for high, it was like that right buyer at that right time looked at the right item, right? And you try to follow suit and do the same thing. But that that was just, you know, that one time incident. Yeah, right. Fluke. Right. And so for me, it's like, hey, if it's been sitting for a while and you get that offer and, you know, just just take and move on. Right. Cash flow. Right. Yeah. More money to buy more items to flip again. Yeah. And and you, again, this is an inflation podcast. But since the beginning, even before we were talking about inflation, I've always said uh, money today is worth more than money tomorrow. And mm-hmm. for multiple reasons. Right. Because you can take that money, you got the cash flow, you flip it, you turn around, you're buying more inventory with it. Um, and then there's always that inflation component. You know, you let something sit for three, four or five years. Maybe you get the price you were hoping to get. But had you have sold it at a 70 percent offer a couple of years ago, turn that money into more inventory, you know, and, and sourcing is an issue. We've had people say, yeah, that just assumes you can always source. So maybe maybe you do have a, a drought of your sourcing ability. And so you you hold on to it because it's not you, you're not actually able to, you know, cash flow that money into more inventory as easily as you'd like. So. Uh, yeah, those are some factors you got to look into even when it's been sitting for a while. Uh, so the next one that you have listed here is when it's over 50%. And I think that kind of goes along with what you're saying. Um, and and f- 50% might be an arbitrary number because I've got a lot of things listed that I would never take a 50% offer on, even if it sat for a year. And some things like you said, where, yeah, I'd take a 50% offer because I bought it for such a cheap price. So part of that's going to depend on the amount of time it's going to take you to ship it, the cost of your shipping, how much money you you paid for the items, that purchase price. So what is your actualized, realized profit going to be on the item? 50% isn't a bad number, um, but I mean, I would say typically 70% for me is is one of the lower ends that I will take most offers. But again, it depends on the item. Uh, 70% discount on a hundred dollar item is a lot different than a 70% discount on a $20 item, you know, as far as the actual dollar amount. So, uh, yeah, uh, looking at that ROI and, and is it worth it? Yeah. I mean, the reason, I, the reason I say this is because I think sometimes we get so held up in the value that we see in the item instead of realizing 
how much we paid for it. Right. And, and again, people might disagree, but I find myself when I was first reselling, uh, you know, side hustle, like, okay, it's okay. Like I'm, I'm willing to wait. It's no big deal. But when you become a full-time reseller, I find that you, you need to have those sales moving through, right? You, you got to have that sell through rate. And, and there's various reasons for that. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but you know, having that cash flow is so important. Now, when it's a bundle, it's okay to accept multiple. I would say it's it's okay to accept multiple offers that normally you wouldn't take. Mm. Yep. Right. So I've had it before. You know, I, I've talked about my Hot Wheels haul where uh, people were offering me, you know, sixty percent on on each of the Hot Wheels, and if it was just one person offering that, mm, I probably would hesitate a little bit, right? Because I know, like these these are hot items. So this is within a week. Somebody is offering me, you know, sixty percent where. If it was a month or two months, then maybe I'd consider that. But I want like about, you know, 70, 80 percent. But if it's if it's, you know, somebody that's out there, like, for example, I had a deal where I think somebody bought six Hot Wheels for me and they offered about 60 percent on each of them. I only paid four to five bucks on each on each of those Hot Wheels. I'm going to take it right. That, that, that's a nice, decent sale that allows me to buy more. And so you just you just got to be aware of those scenarios. Yeah. The other type of bundles, that's if you got like maybe a lot in one a niche, but sometimes it's an individual item. And there's been times I've been at a garage sale. Um, I'll give you an example. I bought a bunch of like wood blocks. Like there was like a kit, a set and the person had like six of them. And I'm seeing, I could sell these things for like 49 99 mm -hmm. and I got them for like a couple dollars each. Well, I'm normally not going to take a lower offer like 30 or $35 on a set like this. But when somebody sometimes offers to buy all of them, I'll buy all six of them at $30 a piece. It's like, well, I can hold on to all of these things forever and slowly sell them at the price I want. Or this is one shipment. Pack it up. Mm -hmm. It's out the door. I can save on shipping that way. And then I've got rid of all of it. And so sometimes it's worth the, the bulk deals. That it's almost like a reverse bulk deal. We love getting bulk deals where you're buying a bunch at once. And the reverse end of the bulk deal, sometimes it's worth getting rid of a bunch of one item at a discounted price because, hey, that clears that shelf off and you're not sitting and selling them individually. Not always worth it. Sometimes it's like, nope, I can get it. These are fast moving items. But if they're slow moving items, man, move them, move them, move on. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And that leads us to the next one. When you need cash, <laughs> when, when things yeah. are slow, you might be like, ah, oh, I don't know if I want to sell it for 60. I really need the hundred dollars. No, sell it for the 60 because you may not get that hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's one of the-, the If you're trying I, to buy bacon, for you know for the table so you can eat there you, go. you know sell it seriously i i, I think I, I holding out like in hopes of something it, it's it's just hope right somebody offering you you accepting that's cash as long as they pay which hopefully one day all gets resolved right but when you need cash, sometimes it's okay. You know, make that 25% sale, put that 35% sale, put that 50% sale. If you need cash, accept those offers, which kind of leads to my last, uh, Mike and I, I think we are in agreement on this one. When, when sales are slow, you got to accept those offers. And I, and I know, you know, I, I, Orlando, sometimes I'm talking about myself in third person. I feel like I have a crystal ball. Like you do this, you'll get more sales. Yeah, you get very conspiracy theorist. <laughs> you, you've got some, okay. So people, especially with sports and stuff, they've got their like, if I wear these socks <laughs> in the morning, then this will happen. But if I wore those socks and then they didn't score, then I have to take them off because then, uh, then it'll ruin the socks for the next game. Yeah. Like the, the people have their, their things, you know, that they, they believe wholeheartedly. But I do think there's something to be said about the eBay algorithm in the sense of eBay wants to see an active store. They want to see you making sales because they're going to make money if you're making sales. Mm -hmm. And so if you are a seller in the same way they want you to be top rated because it makes them look good in the sense of you get stuff shipped out on time, you're offering returns, all those things. In the same way, if you're a person who's accepting offers, because eBay, I mean, yeah, same thing. They want you to make as much money as possible on an item because they make a bigger chunk. Mm -hmm. But if you're just sitting and you've got a store that has sat for months and it's not moving a lot of items, well, as far as they're concerned, like, I mean, you're paying insertion fees and a store fee, but that's about all you're making us. But if all of a sudden you're accepting a bunch of offers coming through, hey, this is a this is a store that let's throw their items up a little higher on the search list because they'll take an offer and we can actually they want to realize the money. They want that money coming in this quarter before their quarterly earnings are due so they can show their stock. You know what I mean? Like in the big scheme of things, they want more people moving things faster in the long run, it might hurt them as a company, 
But usually CEOs and stuff are worried about how they can make the company look short term for their stakeholders. And, you know, so the algorithm, I would imagine in some way or another is going to boost stores that are willing to move inventory faster. Oh, agreed. Agreed. I, and I, I, to me, it's, it's real. <laughs> Like I can say, I can't think of how many times I took an offer that was, you know, I was like, oh, I don't feel comfortable, but I know the $60 I miss out on this item, I'm going to make far more than $60 on the f- sales that are going to follow through later on. And I would say a lot of the time it's been correct. Let's know in the comments. Do you find that to be true that when you accept offers, you bring in a lot more sales than counter? I I, I feel that when you counter offer, I think it's like a one in 10 chance that that person's actually going to like buy it. That, that's that been my experience. Like you got to You got to accept those offers when they come through to make those sales. And with that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant and be reselling late. Peace. <laughs>